Still thinking of that fish you lost and wondering what you could have done differently to land it? Well, I got four tips for you that'll increase your chances of landing the one that got away. All right, so we all have that story of that one fish that got loose, snapped your line, spit your lure, or you lost it at the boat. And sometimes, here's the thing, it just wasn't meant to be, but many times, it was your fault. You might not even know why. Well, here's some reasons why, and more importantly, some tips that will help you land more fish. Let's do a countdown. Let's start with number four. It's your fishing line. A rule of thumb says you should be changing this out at least every year with some scenarios calling for twice a year. It could be expensive to be changing line out on all 10 pulls, which may be the reason you're not doing it. Now, there's a lot of reasons why this right here may snap, but one of these may be the culprit. Now, this one may be obvious, but frequent use of your fishing line is going to degrade the structure of it. It's going to make it want to tangle and prone to snap. Number two is really a question for you. Do you store your fishing poles with the line on it in your car? Well, if you do, UV rays are not your friend and will degrade the structure of your line making it weak. Number three, do you fish with a lighter line weight? Well, the reality is if your line weight's lower, it's going to have less structure to it and will break down faster. Now, here's one you might not think about. Do you actually store your poles with line on on it while they're still wet. If you do, no good. It will break down the structure faster. If you fish salt water, it's gonna break down your line faster than fresh water. Also keep in mind what kind of line you're using. Your fluorocarbon is gonna be more abrasion resistant than your mono or your braid. So while you may be thinking, I lost that fish because it was a swamp doggy, the reality is you lost that pig because you weren't paying attention to how you store, change out, how frequent and what kind of line you're using. Dial this in and lose less fish. All right, number three. Inside the mouth of that bass you're trying to set the hook on, it's basically three things. You got bone, you got tendons, and you got muscle, which essentially act as a vacuum cleaner on that bait. And since you don't know where that hook's gonna connect with the bass, you could have a sweet hook set with the barb going fully through and you're gonna keep that fish on. Or a lot of times you get it to the boat and you realize you basically just pull it right out with no trouble at all. We've all been there. Being that you're trying to set this hook into maybe a piece of cartilage or bone, you can't be using cheap doll hooks. If you're gonna pay a little bit more for something, do it with your hooks. There are a lot of great hooks out there. You got Sixth Sense, you got Mustad, you got VMC, which are some of my favorites. And I'm also a fan of the black nickel coatings. If you notice your hooks getting dull, and you can test it like this, you simply take your fingernail, take the hook, and pull it along. If it creates a white line like that, you're good to go. You got yourself a nice, sharp hook. If it doesn't scratch at all on your fingernail, you know you got a doll hook, and you do one of two things. You can get a new hook, you can throw that one in the trash, or you can get yourself one of these, which is a hook sharpener. You know, with most single hooks, I mean, you end up, when you when you do the math, you're only spending like a dollar on them. And to be honest with you, I would prefer just to get rid of a doll one and bring a nice new one in. But however, a lot of times you get lures that have these hooks on them. Um, you might have like spinner baits, and these things cost 10, 12, $15 a pop. So you're gonna to want to invest in one of these hook sharp. Properly sharpening a hook doesn't take that long. It really could be the difference between a really great day out in the water and a really bad day out in the water. I thought about taking a moment to show you actually how to sharpen a hook, but then I realized it was getting a little too complicated and I figured I'd just put it in my upcoming videos. So hit that sub and bell notification and you will get notified when that comes live here in a couple of weeks. And if you don't have one of these, I'll put the descriptions and link below. All right, number two. So I was shooting a video about nine months ago of how to utilize the wacky worm. And this five pounder just nailed it. I wasn't prepared for it. And because I wasn't prepared for it, I lost it and it was my fault. And this is why I didn't have my drag set. <laughs> it was a real drag. That's a double pun. Real drag. And here's the thing, most snaps can be avoided by simply learning how to set the drag on your reel. And if you don't know what the drag is, it's simply this, it's two friction plates on the inside of your fishing reel. If the fish pulls hard enough, the friction is overcome and the reel starts rotating backwards, letting line out, preventing the break. Here's usually how this plays out. You're not really paying attention to the drag because most of the time you're catching dinks, you know, you're one, two, three pounders. Where this really comes into play is when you finally get a hold of one of those five, six pounders, seven pounders, and you realize, oh crap, I didn't set my drag. And before you realize it, that big fish takes a dive, you don't have your drag set, and 
snap goes your line. And here's the rule of thumb. Your drag should be set to about one third or one quarter of the line's rated breaking strength. All right, I'm gonna throw a curveball in here. Uh, the reality is most fishing lines aren't rated correctly. Manufacturers will often stamp 20 pound test on a line that actually breaks at 25. And they do this because you get the consumer that goes, oh wow, this line is super strong. I'm gonna buy it again. So if you actually want to set your drag properly, you're gonna to have to test your line's breaking strength. Once again, I thought about sharing with you how to set your drag, but I figured that's another video I need to do, so I put that in my queue, and it'll be coming to this channel sometime in the near future. All right, let's finish. Number one, make sure you check your rod guide, specifically the aluminum oxide rings. This actually just happened to me. I was using some braided line and I kept reeling it in and then I just noticed that it kept fraying and I couldn't figure it out, I was losing my mind. It took me a little bit to figure it out, but then I was inspecting the tip and I noticed the aluminum oxide ring had a tiny hairline crack in it. And every time that my braided line ran over it, it would slowly fray it. And I couldn't feel it, but I noticed that my line was going all crazy. And it was an easy fix. I just replaced the tip and I was good to go. So before you lose that big fish, it may be a good idea uh, once or twice, maybe three times a year, just to check over your aluminum oxide rings on your guides just to make sure there's no hairline fractures in there because I don't want that to be the reason that you lose that giant fish. So as I was shooting this video, I realized there's probably 10 other reasons why it actually may be your fault that you're losing those big fish. So I'm gonna launch those videos here in the next couple weeks. Hit that sub and bell and I'll keep them coming. Hey guys, thanks for watching. See you in the next video or out in the water. <laughs> Bye.